Hi there everyone. It's time to talk about land pollution. There are a lot of people in the world today and they need a lot of food and energy. Getting that energy for them can cause several environmental problems and we need to think about those. Land pollution, very simply, is when an area of land is damaged by some outside source. Land pollution can be man-made or it can be natural. Just pause the video for a moment and have a think for yourself about what sorts of things can cause land pollution. If we think about natural land pollution, this can be caused by volcanoes or earthquakes. This damages the surface and can bring pollutants up from inside the earth. Plants can also cause pollution. For example, poisonous sap can damage other nearby organisms. Another indirect way that plants cause pollution is through forest fires, although we must remember that forest fires are often a natural part of the forest life cycle but they do cause quite a lot of damage. But the earth can handle natural land pollution. The biggest problems are those caused by anthropogenic land pollution. Anthropo means human and genic means starting. So the biggest problems are caused by human caused land pollution. This doesn't make those activities bad, but we are doing this to a lot of land on earth. There are many ways in which we cause land pollution and we are only going to look at a couple of examples in this video. A major example we're going to look at now is intensive farming. Intensive farming is putting a lot of money and resources into getting the most out of quite a small area of land. Here you can see various different types of intensive farming. Intensive crop farming, intensive animal farming and you can also see that intensive farming changes the landscape a lot. Intensive farming makes the best use of modern technology like machines, different chemicals and even the shape of fields to increase production. Intensive animal farming is also called factory farming. We keep very large numbers of animals on very small areas of land and we feed them in a mechanical way. This massively increases production but it also leads to increased environmental damage and in factory farming animal welfare concerns. Again just stop and think about what kinds of damage you think might happen to the land in these cases. Let's look at the good and the bad side of intensive farming. On the plus side, we do get massive increases in production per unit area, per working person and per unit of money spent. This means food becomes much cheaper to produce and so much cheaper to buy, which means there is less risk of starvation. And if you are thinking that starvation is not a major problem in the modern world, that's only because of intensive farming and other technologies. On top of that, by intensively farming the areas that have already been cleared, we can preserve existing areas of woodland and other natural habitats. Now let's look at the disadvantages. Fertilizers and other chemicals can change the biology of nearby water sources. And intensive farming also limits or destroys the natural habitat of most wild creatures. It can also lead to soil erosion where the soil either disappears completely or it can become infertile if the land is not managed properly. Pesticides don't just kill pests they can also kill useful insects as well and those chemicals can also be bad for human health. Finally, we need to think about the amount of energy that we need to make, transport and use the chemicals and equipment that we are putting on all of our intensively farmed goods. So there are advantages to intensive farming but the disadvantages could be a complete disaster if we are not careful. However, at the time of this video we are heading towards 8 billion people on Earth and the truth is that there really is no way to produce food for all of these people without some kind of intensive farming. 
to make the most out of the land we use. Our problem is that we now realize that the way we have been doing it up till now is not sustainable. It is destroying wildlife and will one day make the land much less fertile and then we have even bigger problems. Another downside of intensive farming, or perhaps another way of looking at one we have seen already, is monoculture. To get the most production, we grow only one type of crop in a space and we take all other species away. This is why it's called mono. Mono means one, and so with only one kind of organism in an area, we have a monoculture. But by taking away the species habitat, then we damage the ecosystem by reducing the amount of biodiversity in an area. So let's think about that word biodiversity. What is it and why is it so important? Biodiversity is a measure of the number of different species in an ecosystem. And it's very important because ecosystems work on food webs and food chains. The more species there are in an area, the more links there are in these chains and this gives endurance to the ecosystem. If one species dies out, then other species can still survive by eating other things. But the fewer species there are in an area, the less biodiversity there is, and then the less damage can be done to an ecosystem before it collapses completely and all the organisms in an area die out. Another problem of land pollution is desertification. There have always been deserts and arid lands on Earth, but now humans are affecting the land, especially in hot countries, and that is making areas of desert get bigger. A quick disclaimer here, as we talk about this, I am going to talk about farming techniques again. And for any farmers watching, I am not attacking you directly. And as I said above, I know that it is important that we find the best way to farm lands. And sometimes that means farming intensively. Some of these problems, though, are harder to understand as land pollution issues than something simple like factories pumping chemicals into the earth. However, I am not forgetting that many land pollution problems are caused by these activities too. The world's deserts formed over a very long time. In some places, there is a clear natural border to a desert, like a mountain range for example. But in other places, it is not so easy to see where the change takes place. And this is what we call semi-arid land, like you see in the picture. It's not completely desert, but on the other hand, it's not completely fertile either. I'll just mention again that this word arid is another word for dry, and deserts are sometimes called arid land. The semi-arid land is the edge of deserts or desert fringes and because these places can be lower in biodiversity because life is harder there, the ecosystems can be very delicately balanced. With this in mind, it is very easy for humans to damage these systems and then the semi-arid land becomes full desert. So let's look at a sample process of desertification. Sometimes shallow dips in the land can trap water and help plants to grow there. But if humans come along, they might cut down the trees and allow their livestock to trample the earth. This makes the top layer of soil dry and dusty. Winds can blow this fertile soil away and it can make the dip shallower. If this process continues, then eventually the dip is gone and it can no longer support plants. The semi-arid land has become desert. It is a mistake to think that droughts can cause this sometimes. If your land is well managed, it can recover when the rains return. So that's an example of desertification and you can see in this picture that the hillsides at the back have started to become brown and compacted because the livestock have walked all over them. 
Of course, livestock do need areas of land to graze, but we need to be careful how we allow them to do this to help protect the land that they need to live. Desertification is often caused by humans directly in this way, but sometimes it is the result of climate change or the overuse of water resources, so this is a more indirect way that humans can cause desertification. Here we can see Lake Chad in the center of Africa. In the last 30 years of the 20th century, it shrunk by over 90% in size. You can see in 1973 it is a huge lake that spreads to several countries in the middle of Africa. But because some of these countries were overusing its water resources, by the time 2001 came, it looks more like an inland reef of islands and swamps. Fortunately, in the years since then, it has recovered slightly, but it is still way below the level that it was before it was overused. So we have looked there at a couple of examples of land pollution, and I want to say again, these are just a couple of the harder examples to understand. But we can all imagine factories putting out chemicals into the nearby land and causing damage in that way. There are many other ways that humans can damage the land. The effects of land pollution can be very serious, and we need to think now about the ways in which our behavior has been unsustainable. It doesn't mean that we have to feel bad about what we have done, we didn't really know. But now we do understand, it's important that we start to change our behavior. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, please like it and possibly subscribe to our channel. Maybe pass this on to a friend who wants to learn something about land pollution. Thanks for watching and bye for now.